Hi everyone, welcome to Quality Food Safety 101. This is Arsalan and today we will talk about food spoilage and its control. This is the sixth topic in the basic food safety playlist. The full playlist description and also the link to each of the videos is in the details. Check those and then come back and let's start food spoilage and its controls. And also like and subscribe to the channel. This content is for you and your safety. So let's start. Food spoilage is the process of food becoming inedible or inconsumable by humans. It could be due to microorganisms like yeast and mold or bacteria or it could be due to any damage. Like think about it, if you went to a store and purchased a tin can having uh, canned vegetables and on your way to the home you drop it and it cracks. Now these vegetables can be spoiled because you will not feel like eating out of a can which is damaged or cracked or having uh, you know any other problems in it. Another example can be expired products. Expired products are also spoiled. People don't want to eat them so they become inconsumable. In addition to being spoiled, they can also cause food poisoning, but that's another point. But uh, the main issue is that they are now inconsumable. So as I said, the major causes of food spoilage can be mold, yeast and bacteria. And also one more thing is enzymes. So enzymes are proteins which are produced sometimes by the microorganisms and also they are part of the normal living systems. Like for example, vegetables which we purchase from the stores. Even if you put them in the chillers where the microorganisms activity will be very less but still after a few days they become black. So these are the natural enzymes in the vegetables which keeps on working and it keeps on breaking the cells and making the spoilage happen. So enzyme activity sometimes still continues in the chillers as well. These are the signs of the spoilage which are off order means bad order smell, uh, discoloration, sliminess, stickiness, mold growth or fungus growth, texture change, for example, who wants to eat a soggy cracker? It's a spoiled food, basically, nobody wants to eat it. Then taste deterioration or taste change, may, for example, sour milk. Then pest evidence, blown up cans or packs, production of gas and damaged packaging. All of these are signs of spoilage and they make food waste and people don't want to consume it. How do we control the spoilage? One of the major controls of the spoilage is temperature control. For example, for mold and yeast, if you put the food inside the proper temperature control, they cannot grow. Same goes for bacteria as well. They cannot grow also on temperature control environment. Stock rotation, which is first in first out or FIFO. Uh, by this we maintain the shelf life. So uh, through the stock rotation what happens is that the food which is about to expire gets consumed faster and as a result it doesn't get spoiled. For enzymes there is a unique control in addition to temperature control there is blanching as well. Now blanching is done by submerging for example vegetables in very hot water to give a shock to the enzymes and stop the activity because enzyme activity cannot happen after 60 degrees Celsius and then immediately taking them out after a few seconds and submerging them into very cold water so that the heat will not spoil the vegetables furthermore and enzyme activity is stopped. So this is called as blanching. In addition to this, there are some other very simple controls which we do in, at home also like for example freezing of food. Especially for meat products, we do the freezing of food and extend their shelf life. And also salting of food or marination through spices also increases the shelf life because uh, during marination the water activity reduces and spoilage does not happen because microorganisms and enzymes everything needs water to cause spoilage. There are some other industrial uses uh, or industrial application of food spoilage control as well like acid treatment of food like canning like UHC treatment. Those topics are furthermore advanced and they will be covered in other videos which will be dedicated for that level of food safety courses. For basic food safety, the information which we have covered today and the level of control is quite sufficient. This is it for the topic. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with other food handlers and your family and friends. This is food safety guys. It is necessary for everybody. 
and it is free information for all thank you see you in the next one